Hi, Michael Bettin here for another episode of It's Cup of Time. And today I want to talk about recording and go through the history of some of the various recorders I've used over the years and talk about my newest recorder. So recording, I've been recording since I was probably 10 years old when my father bought a Sony reel-to-reel -reel recorder that used little three-inch reels. And my sister and I used to play around with that. We would do call-in radio shows and make up things like that. And that's when I first got my interest in recording. From there, I moved up into cassettes when those came out. Later on, I got a seven-inch reel-to-reel recorder with those bigger reels on it. And I had one that I hauled all over the country with whatever band I was in recording live performances on the seven inch reels of tape. I still have that one and I have another one here in storage somewhere. And then from there, Sony came out with the Walkman using a cassette. I picked up a real nice recording Walkman. Now, most of them were just playback only, so you could put your music in there and listen to it. But I picked up a real nice recording Walkman and used that for many, many years, doing live interviews, hooking up to, to a phone connection, doing over the phone interviews, and also recording live concerts and music. And that lasted many, many years. I picked up a second one, and those were really workhorse units. From there, I moved into digital recording. The first digital recorder that I had was a Yamaha Pocket Track 24. Very small, compact unit. And it was amazing because it was digital, and I could plug it right into my computer dump the recorded files, go right into, at that time I was probably using GarageBand or some other uh, you know, basic recording software. I could dump the files right into there and manipulate them, edit them, whatever was needed. That was a far cry from having things on tape where you had to go through some sort of interface to digitize the analog audio into digital and that was a pain. But this was just amazing because it was very small and light. I could stick it just about anywhere. Now for the time, the Pocket Track 24 made great digital recordings. And they're still decent sounding recordings today. And that would have been about 13 years ago when I had that. From there, I started moving in to the Zoom family. And the first thing I picked up was the Q2 HD. Not only was this a rather good digital audio recorder, but it shot video. Not high quality video, but it shot video. So it was kind of a bonus. Very small and light, uses two batteries. I think they're double A's in there. And it was easy to carry around, easy to sit on a tripod on a table or something and capture the video of me playing in various situations. So a lot of my earlier YouTube videos were shot with this and recorded with this. And because it was a decent audio recorder, I used this just strictly for the audio. You could turn the video off and I used it as an audio recorder in many, many situations. Not bad for the time, you know, for the technology. From there, I wanted to move up something a little better. So when it came out, I got the Zoom Q2N. A bit of an improvement on this. Again, it's a stereo recorder. Also a video recorder. A little higher quality video than the original Q2 unit. And better mics in here. So I've used this over the years. I've probably had this, what, maybe 10 years? I can't remember when they came out. 
but I use this in many situations, recording live audio and live video. Some of my earlier YouTube videos here were shot and recorded on this. And it was a great unit. I get not super video quality, but it works for what you need it to be. The one thing about these zooms like this, it has a bit of a fisheye lens. And that's great for having your camera up close and capturing the whole thing. And that's kind of what it's made for. It's made for up close where you can have maybe this above your drum set and then you can capture the whole drum set or if you're a keyboard player your whole keyboard area or even the band have it not too far and with the fisheye you can get the whole band in there now if you get it up real close you get the real rounded fisheye look but as you pull back further that becomes less prominent but it was a great great little, little unit then they came out with the Q2N 4K, an upgrade, which shoots 4K video. And I got one of those because why not? I got one really cheap on a deal, and it's like, okay, I'll go for it. Now, I don't shoot in 4K. And here's a word. If you do shoot in 4K on that, the files are massive. So I just keep it in standard uh, HD whatever I have it set up for. But this is the camera. It looks identical almost. They changed the shape a little, but they upgraded the optics in it. And I'm not sure if they kept the audio the same, but it sounds similar. But it does have better video even in the non 4K. So that's why I got it. And this is the camera I have right up over there, mounted on a tripod permanently as my b-roll recorder now what's b-roll you say well in, in video production talk here's my main camera which is the one you see most of the time now other things that you will bring in other clips they typically call b-roll so i have the zoom up there as my b-roll recorder because it can cover this whole area and as you can see on this one, this is as wide as I can get. I would have to pull the camera way back to get a wider field of view. But I use this for things like right now when I'm speaking in front of my setup or if I'm just playing the middle of the setup here. When I want to get over and get the bells or I want to get the gong over here, I'll switch to the Q2M, which gives me a wider view. I'll view the whole setup. Or sometimes I will use a third camera. I'll put my iPhone in the mix and often I'll have the iPhone over on this side to get a better angle over on all the bells and things. So these are great recorders and the audio is top-notch. The video is okay and you, you can see when I switch to the b-roll here how it looks compared to this from my Canon. I have to laugh because a lot of people will buy these and then they'll do a review of them and, and complain about the video. But you can buy the 4K version of this often for $200 or less. I think I got picked one up for $170. And people are expecting to spend like $200 on a recorder like this and get video like they would get on a $1,000. Canon or Nikon camera. It's like, no, <laughs> what do you expect for 200 bucks? For 200 bucks, the 4K version that I'm pointing to right now and looking at, and you can see the quality, it's fine. It's great for B roll, it's great for recording out in the field. I, I use it for live things a lot and that. But yeah, if you're going to spend $200 to get video, it's not going to be the best quality. Even the 4K is not going to be the best 4K like you would get in a $1,000. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, pick your brand. But it is great audio, so I use it for audio a lot. And these are nice because you can throw them in your travel bag. I travel with things like this when I think I might want to do some field recording, audio, 
maybe get some field b-roll that I can use you know fly in on whatever video I'm using and they're great I usually carry one in my bag so I can capture things on the road now from there zoom came out with the H well this is a little out of order but there's also the H1N which is basically I would think probably the very same mic capsules that they have in here and this is audio only recorder you can buy this for about a hundred bucks this is fabulous I use it all the time often I'll carry it in my coat pocket in case I come across some field recordings or something I like if I'm going across like a construction site you know walking downtown somewhere and there's construction and I got all these hammers and machinery going pull this out get some great samples of that you know things like that or if I'm at the lake I can get some good you know wave sounds and bird sounds and stuff so I like to carry this one around again I can slip it in my bag and travel with it easily I use this for a field recorder a lot and I've recorded a lot of live shows with this just because it's easy to bring and you just set it up and hit record and you're recording a great little unit and like I said you can get these for a hundred bucks I believe they even have a deal right now for hundred and nineteen dollars you can get this and you can get a case and an AC adapter and stuff and it's a great deal now while I'm holding the case I have to mention if you buy any of these buy a case you know it's great here's a little case you can get with the setup protects it when you're carrying it slipping in your pocket or in your carry-on bag whatever works out well now about seven years ago I moved up into a bigger digital recorder I picked up the ever popular zoom h6 I wanted something that gave me more capability than just a two-channel unit like this so with the H6 it's got two built-in mics and it also has two XLR inputs on either side so you can plug in four additional microphones which is great I like to be able to put in some higher quality mics some nice small diaphragm condenser mics or such or if I'm recording I can have this set up get a nice stereo feed from here have four separate mics spread out around my set or maybe have two overheads and then two side mics you can configure things however you want but this was a really great upgrade giving me that capability of six microphones like I said I've had this about seven years it's still going strong I still use it a lot it has a lot of fantastic features probably the best is these interchangeable capsules so here is the XY mic capsule when I bought it it came with a lot of accessories it came with a hard case and it also came with a midside microphone capsule that you can just plug in midside is a special kind of recording where you have a mic pointing front and then you have two capsules going to the side so you're actually recording a mono straight ahead and then you have the sides you can blend in and you can control the stereo width of things when you mix it down so this is a nice little capsule I don't use midside so much but it's nice to have and then the other thing that I got with it was this adapter to plug in an additional two more microphones through the XLR inputs so I can now run six external microphones or I can plug guitars basses keyboards directly into these so this gives it a lot of capability it's a great unit I, it, it still works fine I still use it all the time so I have no complaints about it I kept waiting for zoom to upgrade this hopefully with a touch screen and uh, some other you know newer features because these came out 
eight or nine years ago, I believe. And I've had mine about seven and a half, you know, a little over seven years. So technology has come a long way since then. And Zoom is still selling a lot of these. It, it's a good, sturdy recorder. This has been all over with me. Traveled to so many different gigs of different types that I have recorded. I used to use it here as the main recorder in the studio, running my overhead mics that I've got right up here down into this, and I would use this to capture that for the videos I made. Now I have a Zoom L8 mixing board that I use for videos that's permanently here. But this, I've done everything with it. It's a great unit. But like I said, I wish Zoom would update this and come out, especially with a touchscreen version. I do like having the knobs. It's great to have the actual volume knobs to turn and give you control. And if you have a touch screen, it's kind of a, you can't have both. You can't have a touch screen with like volume controls and knob volume controls, unless it becomes a bigger, more expensive unit where these are motorized or something. In a portable unit, you're kind of like, it's one or the other. So this is great the way it is. Uh, again, no complaints. I love it, I still use it a lot. But I was waiting for Zoom to update. And they came out with a few different products and they finally came out with the M series. And they have the M4, which gives you a small screen and uh, two external inputs, two built-in inputs, and it gives you what is called 32-bit float recording. I'm not going to go into a wild and long explanation on what 32-bit float is, but I will put a link down below to a video that does explain how that works. But the main idea about 32-bit float, which is something I've been wanting for a long time, because as a solo musician, it's a godsend. 32-bit float records a very wide dynamic range. So if you've got a whisper, very quiet sound, if you've got very quiet sounds, you can boost it up in post-production and you will not bring up a lot of noise. Whereas on a lot of standard ones, if, if the recording is so low, it's going to be too close to the noise level and you bring it up and you got all the background noise and all the noise of the actual unit where you can raise these very quiet volumes to a usable level and they will still be noiseless. Also, if you are recording something and the person gets really loud like this or something else. Now, I probably clipped <laughs> my recorder here because it's not set up for shouting. But if you are at a live concert or you are recording yourself live or speaking to that and suddenly it gets real loud and it clips and the whole thing is it starts to distort in 32-bit float you have enough headroom that you can turn that down and it won't be clipped not on the recorder now you can still clip the microphones so if i have an external microphone too close to the source and it gets really loud i can distort the microphone and all the recorder will do is record the distortion. And you can't save that. But if you still get a clean feed from the microphone, but it goes into the red on the recorder, you can turn it down in post, and it's completely usable. So 32-bit float. I've been waiting for this to come to hopefully an H6N or something. Touchscreen and 32-bit and. It hasn't happened. They came out with the M series, which I'm not thrilled about because it's not what I want. It seems to be a little more, they've got three models. They seem to be more geared towards filmmakers and people maybe doing podcasts or reporting. I mean, they, they actually, the M4 has a grip on it. So you can actually like, well, what do you think of this? Or if you're recording, you can, you know, you can do this in a live shoot or field recording or that. So it doesn't work for me. So a couple of years ago, Tascam, who also makes great recording gear, I've used so much TEC and Tascam gear over the years. It's a 
they've been around forever it seems like Tascam came out with a new recorder called the X8 the Porta Capture X8 first thing you'll notice it has a touch screen it also has 32-bit float recording uh, like I said, I think this came out maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago. I waited and waited and waited. I saw this. I waited and waited. Okay, Zoom. Come on, Zoom. Come on. I waited for them to come out with their own version of an updated H6 like this, and it never happened. So I finally pulled the trigger a few months ago and bought one of these. Let's take a look at the X8 got it here in a case first thing I always do is buy a case for things it's nice I can have my cords in here but here is the X8 so let's do comparison you can see they are almost the same size they both have built-in microphones that I will talk about they both have two XLR inputs on either side so they're comparable they're like this is exactly what I wanted zoom to make something like that I was hoping to get this with the exchangeable capsules and accessories in a zoom version but I finally bought this and I have to say it was a great buy I am so glad I got it so let's look at some of the features let's turn it on here takes a minute to boot up and people are like oh it doesn't boot up right away it's like well that's okay I guess if you're like oh I gotta get this going because I want to catch this sound you can't you don't want to wait five or ten seconds to boot up but there we go and you can see we have a nice bright screen there you can see my levels from speaking on there and it's a touch screen let's go back to the intro screen here it comes with various different modes of recording you have a field recording mode a podcast mode a music mode let's see what else do we have I don't use most of them. Here's the podcast. It allows you to have the two built-in mics, two external mics, and control all that. Let's go back to the launcher. What else is on there? Like I said, field recording. Special you can... So these are designed for specific activities you want to do you can tell this is not scripted I'm just talking about all this what's this other mode a voice mode so if you're just doing speaking and it's nice it's as you can see it's real clear on the screen so I like that the information on the volumes is easy to find So we have a, you know, various modes on here. The mode I use all the time is manual mode, which gives you six channels. And manual mode gives you 32-bit float recording. So I don't want to record in the other ones. I want the 32-bit because that can save your butt in post-production. If things, again, are too quiet or too loud, you can fix it. So this is great, it, it, and it's easy to use on the touch screen. I can go to the inputs. I can adjust my volume just by raising and lowering. So, I mean, if you got an iPhone or an Android phone, you can use this, and that's the beauty of it. Do I miss the buttons? Yeah, sometimes. Because I do like having, you know, automatic, just reach over and spin it, but... It's so much like having your phone. It's fine. Now, this is a great little unit, and it does have stereo mics. Right now, they are in an XY pattern. You can unscrew them 
and switch the positions so they're in an AB pointing more off to the sides. They plug in with a standard small jack like on a, on a headphone, but apparently you can't plug anything else into that. It would be nice if it had the capability that you could plug like other small microphones or different accessories in to the jacks, but apparently that doesn't work. Maybe an update will do that, but it's fine. The built-in mics are fine. Built-in mics are great. They do a, a real nice recording. I have to say that. Let's talk about just a comparison again. It's a bit heavier than the Zoom H6. It's a little more weight to it, even though they're almost the same size. One thing is the build. The, the Zoom has a rubber coated plastic housing, which is easy to grip. I like that. And it's, I don't know, it just seems a little more substantial in build, especially the mics. The mics here, this is a metal housing. And it's, I've dropped this a few times and it's fine. The mics on the Tascam here are plastic. I'm a little worried if I dropped it and it landed on the mics that they would snap off or something. So that's one thing to consider. So far, no problems. I haven't dropped it at all. So the touch screen, that, to me, that was the biggest feature. The fact that I could easily touch it and move through different things. You could also use this jog wheel to do the same sort of control as you would on the touch screen. But it's easy to use. Just hit record, boom, you are recording. The menu goes deep, just like in the H6. There's a lot of things once you get into the menu and go down through different pages as far as setups and adjustments. But it's fairly easy to use you know, for just basic recording. You dive into it, you can get more functions than that. Now as far as battery life, this is supposed to get about five hours on four AA batteries. Now it does have phantom power for the mics. So if you're running four microphones, you're running a touch screen and that, it's probably going to get a little less. The Zoom H6 probably gets a little more battery length, but I never use these with batteries. I keep batteries in there for times like right now, but I always power my units with a battery pack, like you charge your cell phone with. You can hook this up through USB in both of these units. In fact, all the Zoom stuff, and I think all the Tascam stuff, you can power through USB, either through a computer, if you're going direct, or with a battery pack. So I always use a battery pack. One like this, a small one, this will go forever. I mean, this will go for days. And then you just plug it in, or recharge it, and you're good for days again. So I always use a battery pack, because the last thing I want is I'm making a great recording and this thing stops because the batteries have run out. This, I know it's, it's gonna last. So power everything through a battery pack. Now you might see this flashing blue light and wonder what in the world is that? Besides being a little annoying, this is the optional Bluetooth adapter. Another thing I wanted in hopefully an updated Zoom H6. Touch screen, 32-bit float, Bluetooth adapter. The three things I really wanted, and this has it all. This is just a little adapter that you plug in. It's about $40 extra. And people are going, well, they should have just built it in to it. But it's all about price point. So if you look at, this is priced at $499. So if they do, and that's a magic price point, under $500, okay? If they added the Bluetooth thing, they would have had to charge like $539. Suddenly that sounds like way more expensive. And not everybody wants Bluetooth control. So that's something to consider. Anyway, 40 bucks for this. I bought this on sale for $399. They've got it on sale quite a bit. 
for that price, which is pretty reasonable for a piece of kit like this. Zoom has come out with the X6, which is a smaller version with the two built-in capsules and two XLR units, inputs, and that retails for $399. So when this went on sale for $399, it was like, hmm, which one do I get? I bought the bigger one for the same price. Now granted, I was thinking the X6 is a year later, hopefully improved technology, maybe some updates this doesn't have, but I wanted the more outputs. I also wanted the bigger touch screen. So an X6, it's a much smaller screen because the unit is shorter. So Bluetooth, what a great thing. Uh, I can't say enough about it. Let's take a look here. All I have to do is download the app to my phone. You can get the app for your iPhone or iPad. I have it on both. You can get an Android version of the app. It's called Tascam X Porta Capture Control. And I connect. And here we go. It's mirroring my input exactly what's happening on it. And this works for all the different screens. So you can go, this is manual mode, you can use podcast mode, whatever mode, and it comes right up on your phone or your pad, which is great. Uh, like I said, for solo musicians, this is amazing because I can have this out in the audience on a stand somewhere. I can actually do a sound check by having the phone maybe in one hand or sitting near me, play my gongs, look at the volumes, set it and record it. And then I can turn the recorder on and off from up here. So if you're a solo musician, it's great because it used to be I'd have to just put it out there and go, well, this is probably good enough volume. You know, not too high because you don't want to clip. And most of my recordings came in on the low side. So I'd have to boost them up in post-production. And sometimes that did bring in a little noise. But it was always a guessing game to try to get my levels when I'm playing live. Or even here in my studio, it's still a guessing game. Although I can see my L8 mixer from here. I can see the little meters on each channel. So it's easy for me to kind of adjust and maybe run over there and turn something up or down and then you know play again but yeah the benefit of this is like I said I can have this out there I have my phone in my hand yeah I can play the gongs and whatever and do a sound check or I could have it sit on my mallet tray over here it's fabulous and then time to record Boom, hit record, and we're good to go. Fabulous. It's just, it's just fabulous. What can I say? So what about the recordings? This makes great recordings. Now, a lot of people have complained about some of these units being noisy, especially at low volume. This is an early unit. As said, I've had it for about seven and a half years. I've never had an issue with a high noise floor on this. And you, you can listen to all kinds of stuff I have on Bandcamp that was recorded with this. And it sounds great. And a lot of videos. Again, I was using this to record the videos for YouTube, either here in the studio or live videos, and the sound is fine. This sounds amazing. It sounds really great. These mics, the built-in mics, are really nice. I, I'm surprised by that. I think they might be a little, little more depth than the Zoom ones. I'll do a shootout with these two, and we'll compare them. But it does a great job. And the 32-bit float recording. What can I say? It's great. I can... You know, with that, I don't even have to worry about setting my levels. But I do like to set my levels because, again, I don't want to 
overpower my microphones because then that's that's lost you can't unclip your microphones so I like to get a good balance and that should be the way anyway uh, 32 bit float isn't a miracle you have to work with it so you want to get a good optimum level for recording right off the bat but then 32 bit float allows you to really work with that in post-production so if I played something really quiet maybe really quiet bells or shakers or bowls or something and I just want to bump it up a bit in post it's easy to do and it doesn't bring any noise and if I get a little carried away on the big gongs and get loud I can bring it down even if it's clipped I can bring it down and it sounds fine so it's it's great 32-bit float is really great but you need to set your levels again there are some 32-bit float recorders out there without any level controls they just you plug in and you record it can work it can work but I still like to get an optimum level now one thing this does do it does how many ever channels you're doing so I'm doing two here and let's say I plug in two external mics I've got four channels it will also do a mix channel of those two so you can go in here and pan your mics and all that where you want them and then right off the bat you have a mix of your performance that's usable that you can listen to but you also have separate tracks of each channel so if I was to do two built-in mics two external mics and download that to my computer I have available four mic tracks and one mix track stereo mix track which is kind of cool and it can be usable and again it's it's usable right away like if you want to hear exactly what something sounded like right away you can use the mix track and go oh yeah that was okay usually I just download the separate channels because that's the way I am and that's how I've worked with just download those into logic and then I can mix from there but it's great that way so let's do a little recording here and we'll see how it works so talking about recording this is one of the best accessories ever made this is a zoom ma2 and it is an adapter to hold your recorders or even a camcorder or dslr in a microphone holder these I use all the time I think I have three of them but we have a standard screw in on the bottom here that you could screw on to like a camera tripod or such but all you got to do is put this in there now you have a handle for field recording if you want so we got a mic stand here and this will fit into a standard microphone clip like you would use for an SM58 one of the wider vocal type mic clips it fits right in there and then you can just pop it right out this is a great accessory I use this for my digital recorders I use it for my video recorders it's great and then you don't have to have necessarily special sort of connectors to adapt things and that but this is great that's what I use I hook it up with that so let's do some recording and see how it is and then we can compare things so now I have the Tascam X8 and the Zoom H6 setup I'm also running my two overhead mics into my Zoom L8 so we'll have a bit of a shootout here I'll record all of them these two are using the built-in microphones the L8 is using my SE8 
small diaphragm condensers that are up above. So let's see what happens. And you can kind of watch the levels on there some. There we go, a bit of a recording. I'll take it through post and we'll listen to three different versions, see what it sounds like. Okay. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative. Maybe gave you some ideas about what to look for in a digital portable recorder. Maybe what type to get and, you know, kind of what's available out there. So see you next time.